Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. Hey. Today we have a very special guest who is actually part of, kind of part of our church family. Um, she's actually in Phoenix, Scottsdale. I think she's in Scottsdale. Um, but we, her family comes to our church, and we're just so thankful for her story. And she's only 15 years old, which is amazing, and all the wisdom she has. Um, she just got saved in January, and she'll be sharing her testimony. Praise God. So we are excited for this. So without further ado, it's my privilege to welcome Alex Rustavma. Or wait, I totally butchered it. What is it, Alex? <laughs> it's Arustamov. Arustamov. It's Russian, and that's why I couldn't say it. Arustamov. I'm not good with last names, but Arustamov. Alex is Russian. You speak Russian too, right? Oh, I do, yes. Yeah, like a lot of rush. Yeah, she's amazing. Um, so, Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We are excited because you were going to do an in-studio with us, but this makes it yeah. a little bit more, I was about to say professional, but we have to go on the techie side of things. But we are so thankful for you joining us, and we're going to have my dad pray for us before we get started. So. Okay, let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much for Alex. I thank you for what you've done in her life and are doing. We just give you this time, Lord, as your word says, whatever you commit to the Lord, it shall be established. And we pray your will will be done. We pray you would guide our conversation. We pray this would encourage other young people who are maybe struggling with new age or struggling with just identity and struggling with uh, depression, all kinds of struggles. Lord, we know it's hard in this life without you, and uh, we know that many uh, teenagers are really struggling. So, Father, bless Alex. Speak through her to touch other young people, to give them hope that you, Jesus, as you said, that uh, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son does not have life. And so, Lord, our prayer is that many people like her would have more, would have life, would receive you as their Lord and Savior and allow you to turn their lives right side up, give them a hope, and give them a future. We thank you and commit this time to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All righty. So I guess we'll just start with Alex. Where were you born? You are Russian, but I don't think you were born in Russia. So I was born and raised in Phoenix. Um, still living in my childhood home. Well, I am a child, but you know, <laughs> still here. Um, and I was. So my family is like religious Christian. You know, they don't really have. A real relationship with Christ but they still do go to church and like participate in all the things there so I was raised kind of in that church and um, I went to their Sunday school and all that um, and I don't know it was it was good having like that sort of upbringing and kind of knowing the basics like who Jesus is and like why church is kind of important yeah. But um, they go to like, a, so it's called St. Akkar, I mean, Apostolic Church. So it's like all, it's kind of Catholic-y. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I didn't really understand anything that was going on when I went to service. And um, I didn't understand the importance of certain things like just repentance and why we are Christians and what the job of a Christian is, which is, you know, to spread the word. And so... Um, I feel like that's what kind of off put me like on the path of, you know, the path to hell. Yeah. And um, I actually had like a few weird encounters in my childhood where like, so for example, sometimes I'd be sleeping and I'd see like a weird dark shadowy figure mm -hmm. in my doorway and I'd be like, oh, that's weird. And then I'd just go to sleep. But, you know, I didn't really realize that that was actually like a demon trying to just like attack me in some way and so I had like those little influences and um my family also talked about zodiac signs a lot um and my sister was in the new age as well so she was sort of um the main person who introduced me into that kind of thing and um it was just you know a lot of factors sort of led me to have like live the sort of lifestyle I did before I came to Christ and, um, you know, also things like celebrating Halloween, that was also a big thing because it sort of is like a euphemism for demons and for Satan to sort of introduce it to kids yeah. and be like, hey, it's okay. Like, look, it's fake. Like, it's not actually real. Yeah. 
it sort of just has that influence on you where you're like, mm, okay, like I don't mind that and that it's okay. Yeah, and just throw it's, some candy at you, you're fine. It's wild, Alex, yep. like we were saying, kind of you're raised religious, but it's wild how when you have just that religious, that form of godliness, but denying the power, that you look that everyone has a desire for spirituality, but you kind of went the wrong way for a while. And uh, yeah, so that's, is that why? Because you didn't really, your church was just something you did. It really didn't affect you. So you kind of got into the new age to kind of have a real experience, right? To where you really felt some power and felt something. And it is amazing. We were talking about this, like Stephen, how it's amazing how the devil will give you those experiences to try to get you in and then to like to steal, kill and destroy, as it says in John 10, 10, you know, maybe you could explain that, how kind of you know how you got into that yeah like so. how you got into some what what was the start of like did your sister help influence you or did you just kind of do it on your own yeah mm-hmm. yeah so it was mostly it was mostly my sister who sort of kind of put me into that world um and love her but it was just that sort of thing where um so she was telling me about zodiac signs and like what i was and i was like oh that's cool that kind of is what i am like that is my personality and me being like I think I was like 10 or something was like well that makes sense because I didn't realize how broad it was and how it could kind of apply to anyone and so that's sort of where my interest sparked in it where I kind of was obsessed well not kind of I was really obsessed with zodiac signs um up until um this year in January so I kind of studied all of them would watch like so like millions and millions of YouTube videos on them just sort of figuring out, because it was like a fun game for me, you know, to go and like kind of try to identify people, Mm. to be like, oh, you're probably this zodiac sign. And it would be like fulfilling to be right about it in a a way. And, um, you know, as I started to get deeper into it, I realized that there was like some, there's more to it, which is the new age. And so that kind of opened the door for it, for um, me to go into that. And um, that's when I started going into birth charts as well, which is even more zodiac signs. What's yeah, that? so there's like a, so yeah, there's like a sun, moon, okay. Jupiter. It's weird. And so you have a different zodiac sign that applies to like your different parts. So for example, your moon is your emotional part and Mars is like your angry part and your Venus is your love part. So it just sort of, uh, gives so much opportunity for zodiac signs to like attribute to you so that you'll be able to like match it more to yourself so that you won't be able to be like oh well that doesn't make sense so I'm going to ignore it because now you have like more than 12 that apply to you yeah. and then um, after the zodiac signs I started getting into manifestation and um, yoga mm-hmm. which I did not realize was bad at all because I thought it was a good nice peaceful experience and meditation as well, um, which sort of just allows your mind to go places where it's not supposed to go. You know, you're opening your third eye, but in reality, you're just looking into Satan's realm and, you know, he's able to trick you in so many ways. And um, so, yeah, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, manifestation. So it would it's the reason why it was so attractive was because it was just this sort of way to give me everything that I wanted or that I thought I wanted. So I would write like stupid things like, I don't know, I'm going to get a boyfriend. And I would write that like a hundred times and supposedly it would happen. That's like law of attraction too, right? Is that like kind of the same thing? I think they are the same thing. Well, law of attraction is like thinking with your thoughts and then manifestation is like writing it down over which reminds me I think it's in Matthew where um, Jesus is talking about prayer and he's like do not pray like the heathen do the repeti- their repetitions mean nothing yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and that's what we're learning about in the Bible study today um, with the women we're in first Peter and first Peter 5 I think it's verse 8 where it talks about to be sober-minded mm-hmm. to be alert because the devil he prowls around like a roaring lion and manifestation you can't like I think Stephen Bancard is talking about that they literally have it to where you like in oh no that's meditation I'm totally thinking of a different thing but same thing I don't know if you did meditation but it's like you're not aware you're letting all these other things fill you mm-hmm. that are demonic mm-hmm. but you're thinking you're being all like peaceful and everything's good 
but mm-hmm. yeah. it's so and bad and th- it just opens the door to the enemy and it's wild it's like biblical meditation is filling your mind like meditating mm-hmm. in scripture so it's we meditate yeah. and biblically david meditate but it's to fill your mind with the word of god and to meditate in the scripture and uh, we're like new age meditation is to empty your mind and then you know, yeah. sp- i believe what they think is like a guide or whatever it will come but it's a demonic I- spirit that wants to oppress yeah. and vex you and it's always wild how you know it says satan disguised himself as an angel of light and his followers disguise himself as righteous men how it always come like i was talking to this warlock once how he said that these demonic spirits would appear as these beautiful women and it was just amazing. So these women were so beautiful, so attractive, so lustful. But then all of a sudden they turned into, after a couple months, they turned into these gross, hideous beings that were so gross that he literally said he threw up immediately. Mm. Wow. And that's how the devil yeah. does. He kind of tricks yep. you in with beauty. There's a book, there used to be an old book called The Beautiful Side of Evil. And that's how Satan always appears at the beginning. He's beautiful, but then he wants to manifest who he really is. But by that time he knows he's usually thinking, I've got you, so you can't really get yeah. out. You know, So he wants to, yeah. and we have to know that I mean, for anyone listening, that that's what Satan's end goal is. It always starts off nice, but always wants to. John ten ten, uh, Jesus, said, I've come to you, my life and life more abundantly, or to the fullest. But Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's mm-hmm. always the end game yeah. of Satan. It always ends up killing and destroying. Yeah. And manifestation is a lot of like the word of faith movement. It reminds yeah. us of Joel Steen Joel scene and stuff yeah. like that, where it's like name it and claim it. Like if you say it enough, it will happen. So did anything ever work for you? Did, were you ever like, oh, this stuff is powerful? Because like, that's when people start thinking they're kind of like a little god. Like, oh, wow, like this stuff kind of works. Or did that ever happen for you? Um, I don't I wasn't doing it long enough to like really have anything huge happen. But um, I don't know, things like, so my mom was sick and she was like in the hospital because of COVID things. Mm-hmm. But um, so like manifested that she would feel better. And then like two days after she was like let out of the hospital. And so I feel like that was like my biggest concern at that moment. So Satan was like, okay, that's probably like a good one to have it happen. Um, So that's the one that like, actually the only one that kind of happened. But, um, but yeah, it was just things like that, that would sort of, and also it would be small things not necessarily big ones like the one with my mom in the hospital but um so for example another one was like getting more clothes mm-hmm. so the next day I would like spontaneously go shopping mm-hmm. just for no reason yeah. so it was like it was small things like that yeah. but it still was enough to keep you like sucked in and like mm-hmm. oh this is good like you kind of have a little power and it's yeah. like that's what everyone yeah. likes about it they feel like oh I have this control that I don't mm-hmm. have in other areas of your life so what were some other areas or like that you went through because I know you struggled with like identity and then very liberal right very liberal growing up and just the stuff you loved Harry Styles right that was and I so mm-hmm. talk about the liberal side of things so you also love the Trump LGBTQ all that <laughs> yeah so, so I You're think you did Trump like Trump supporter. <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> the orange man um, was the evil one huh? yeah. Uh, yeah yeah um so I there's like it's all interconnected in like some way because if you're sort of in the new age then you're obligated to have a liberal point of view you're obligated to just be obsessed with things you know it's the enemy trying to direct you away from god so um harry styles was my god like you were talking about um i'm an old man who's harry styles he was with one direction that's how i know him but did he he broke off because it's not a thing anymore yeah one direction broke up like five years ago and harry was like his own independent he dressed up as a woman uh, right like he does like all this crazy so it isn't stuff. one way it's many ways now it is not one direction <laughs> yeah it's, it's direction. many he can go wherever <laughs> but and then that i think was he the one that song that is so popular right now like watermelon sugar is that harry styles yeah yeah okay. oh i know that no, i'm just kidding yeah. I don't have any idea. but um so harry styles and all that what was the draw to that I don't, so that was when the identity comes in. So I, since I wasn't born again, I obviously had no identity. I had no idea who I was. I was just, you know, the new age led me to believe that I was just a person on a floating rock. And obviously that brings you down so much. That is what makes you depressed. That's what makes you anxious because it makes you feel so irrelevant. Mm. 
And so um, I put my entire self into Harry Styles. I just devoted my entire being to him, you know. Um, I actually, so for Spotify, it gives you an overview of, like, your entire music for, like, all the music you listen to for a year. And Harry Styles was obviously my top artist, and I listened to him for 10,000 minutes for all of last year. And, yeah, it was intense. And I had, like, a tapestry of his face hanging up in my room. I had pictures of him everywhere. Like, my room, everything that I owned was, like, a shrine to Harry Styles. And so um, it just made me feel good because he was very encouraging, I guess. You know, he was like, just be who you want to be, you know, like if you're gay, a unicorn, just like do whatever you want to do. And I was like, okay, that sounds chill, like whatever. And so that's when um, I started to go into like the LGBT community. Um, I ended up coming out last year as demisexual. What's that? What's um, a demi? Literally being straight. Um, it's basically you're not attracted to someone unless you form an emotional connection with them. Oh, wow. It's it's being straight, but the LGBT community leads you to believe that it is something different and that you're special and that you're loved if you're a part of the community. So it's like it's a way for Satan to draw you in again because when you're in the LGBT community, you're just this glorified person and everyone has to respect you. Everyone has to love you. Everyone has to give you praise because you're different. Mm -hmm. And um, so Harry sort of led me to believe that. And um, on top of that, and because of that, I was very depressed. I was very anxious. I was very suicidal. Um, So Alex, you got into that. So it wasn't like you really had gay tendencies. It was just more of to be special what was what was the draw the initial to get into it was a more that you just wanted to feel special as an individual yeah it was like i wanted to feel special and also all of my friends were gay and liberal mm-hmm. so i saw the attention that they were getting and i was like oh that's cool i kind of want a little bit of that yeah. and um i was like having conversations with them and they were helping me with my sexuality and like helping me define which I was best and at first I thought I was asexual which makes absolutely no sense Mm. because it's literally lying to yourself that you have no lust because you know we're built to have lust that's our flesh so um I don't know it was just a bunch of confusion and it just it messed me up a lot and I just didn't want to be alive anymore because of all that confusion you have no identity you're putting yourself all of yourself into a false idol it's it's all messed up in that way. And that's what's so funny is I people get on me because they say, why do you talk about homosexuality so much? And I go, it's not worse than any other sexual sin, right? It's just all sin is sin. Uh, sexual sin, I mean, is against the body. And first, there's a greater thing of sexual sin. But it says, you know, I say, but the reason I talk about homosexuality so much as a pastor is because no other sin, sexual sin, is so celebrated. Oh, yeah. Like you just said, the attention, because no one brags about hardly that I'm a fornicator. Oh, I'm forn- I'll sleep with any girl or any guy. You know, no one gra- really brags about that too much, especially in church. And no one brags about being an adulterer, especially. That's still not cool. But people... I have so many Christian, supposed Christian parents come to me and say, my son is a Christian homosexual, which I go, well, that's kind of an oxymoron because the Bible says, not that you can't struggle with it, but the Bible says, you know, homos, adulterers, fornicators, drunkards, swindlers shall not inherit the kingdom of God, 1 Corinthians 6. But such were some of you. And it's like, so I talk about it not because I'm homophobe and I hate homosexuals. I actually went, I did a live show, radio show, Christian Mm -hmm. radio show at the gay bar. So I don't hate homosexuals. I probably minister more homosexuals than a lot of pastors. But I just see that, like you said, the attention, it's such a honored status like if you want to win a grammy just do a homosexual movie and kiss yeah. a guy or yeah. kiss a girl and it's like it doesn't matter if you're a good actor it's just it's just like you're gay oh it's got to be great and you watch we were watching what's the what this we were watching some singing show and this guy was gay and they're like oh and they're just pandering and falling all over him yeah. and so it's so crazy like when i was a kid it was not you know you'd say you're so gay and it wasn't a good thing mm-hmm. where now it's like oh you're gay oh great you know and yeah. that's crazy how satan and that's kind of the the uh, uh what is it uh isaiah 520 says in the last days 
evil will be called good and good will be called evil. Black will be called white yep. and bitter will be called sweet and sweet will be called bitter. Everything's going to be opposite. And we see that is that, you know, so it's not that homosexuality is worse than any other sexual sin, but it's just the most celebrated sin, a sexual sin that I see. And, you know, because still we don't celebrate if someone's uh, into incest, right? Or into, uh, you know, you know, there's like, I guess there's a, uh, in Minnesota, there's a professor who said sleeping with your daughter, as long as consensual, is very healthy. Mm. So that's how crazy we're getting. This is a doc Sick. guy who's got a doctorate. So we're getting to that point where everything goes. Yeah. And uh, But like you said, the neat thing you said is it brought didn't bring liberation or freedom Depression. or feeling good. Like, hey, I'm such an individual. It made you depressed. And that's where the other yeah. thing is so crazy is like when people do the um, – conversion therapy and change their sex yeah, their right. suicide if we get the percentage maybe you know <laughs> goes through the roof and it's like wait a yeah. sec you're saying you identify if you're a man as a woman but then you get the thing you want and then now you're more depressed so it yeah. shows that really the answer to make it very simple is jesus i mean amen. really like you said i mean yeah. we really need yeah. the, the truth in jesus. Christ. Yeah. amen amen and so lgbt community what did that look like being a part of it like would you go to the pride things and because back yeah june was pride month and all the craziness what it what was that for you it was during covid but what type of things do they get you involved with so um i came out in like september ish came out um and so that was it was september of last year so i didn't really get to like be the flamboyant gay i thought i was yeah. so um I actually came out to like my friends before COVID happened and we were about to go to pride month to, I'm sorry, the pride parade mm -hmm. and all that stuff. And I was like about to be all celebratory of it. And we were like planning some way to not tell my parents so that like, I would just go as like a supporting per like a supporting friend. Um, and so the, like the part of it that made you feel good was like, the amount of likes on posts you got. Mm -hmm. So it was that sort of thing. So it was my coming out post was my most liked post on my Instagram. So I was like, this must be a great thing yeah. because this is, this is me. Like, this is who I am. This is what I am accepted as the most because obviously you're liked more because of mm -hmm. the fact that you are gay. And if people don't acknowledge that, then they're homophobic and they're a terrible person. Yeah. And um, so it was just like this cycle of being like so happy about it and like so prideful about it. Pride. <laughs> Pride. <laughs> but it was like that entire thing, that cycle where you're like on top of the world and then you like just free fall and like fall on your face and you want to kill yourself and you just like hate everything. And it's just like this constant cycle of like, like it's ti it's like time is just repeating itself and you can't get out of it and like pastor craig was saying the only answer is jesus that's the only way for you to get out of that vicious cycle and just to be healed amen, amen. and did you i uh, trinity our little sister who's over there what's up trin um she loves you like she is so thankful for you and your story because trinity grew up different right in the church always like wasn't exposed to any of this stuff but now you guys are like best friends and I love it. We'll talk besties. about that later. Besties. But um, she was saying how you told her like you would when you would see a Christian. So like example, if you were to see Trinity at school, you would specifically yeah. go out of your way to like say the Lord's name in vain or like talk against mm -hmm. it. So can you share a little bit about that and why? Why did you do that? Yeah. So um, I was this sort of thing. So I would see a Christian and I'd be like, oh, they hate me. Like they think I'm the worst person ever. Let me just like, you know, punch them in the stomach like a little bit more with, with my words, obviously. But in love. <laughs> so I would either be like really loud and just yell, I don't know why it's so bad that I'm gay and just like do that. And then they turn around and look at me and be like, like, are you okay? So it was just, or I would go to a Christian and just have a conversation with them and like specifically say things that are triggering so omg and i would like i don't know just things that christians don't really like talking about for some reason well not for some reason the enemy would kind of 
direct me to go do that because I thought it was funny. And then I'd go back to my friend group and we'd laugh about it. So it was just sort of like a trophy thing in a way. Like, I just did this to a Christian. Look at how funny I am. I'm so brave because I'm going against the norms and I'm fighting the patriarchy or whatever it was. Like, it was just, I don't know, it was some weird game. Did you have any again. Christians yeah. that were cool or did anyone give you any good answers or the Jews you freaked most of them out? I'm all young kids probably too. Yeah. Yeah, they would mostly just stay silent. Like, they didn't know what to say because I was so aggressive about it and, like, so rude. Wow, I cannot see that. You're definitely yeah. a new creation, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> cannot picture that of you, but that's what it shows what God does. And then so cool. also you had talked about um, suicide, but mental health issues and then eating disorders. Where did that come in? When did that start? And at what age? So that started eighth grade ish um that's when um kind of my boy obsession started I don't know it wasn't really an obsession it was just sort of like oh boys are a thing okay so it would be like I would have issues with the way my body was because I was just hitting puberty so obviously it's weird but um just the way that social media reflects it would be like oh if you don't look like this you're ugly and so it would be that again, that cycle of where you're like, okay, well, I'm ugly. Let me just not eat anything at all. And then um, after not eating for a while, you would binge eat and then you'd be extremely bloated. And then you'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to starve myself. I'm so ugly right now. So it was again, just like that idea of again, a cycle Mm. just happening over and over again. And then that's when the anxiety and depression came in because of the body image issues and obviously because I was putting myself in these boy obsessions that I was like just put my identity in them like Harry Styles and um so if they wouldn't act in a certain way toward me I would be sad and be like okay well that's it I'm gonna kill myself like it's not worth being alive they don't like me so it was just I don't know, coming up with these things that weren't really true. Again, the enemy lies to you, wants to kill, steal, and destroy. So um, that's where the mental health thing came in. And um, I remember one time I was about to commit suicide, and I was, like, sitting on my bathroom floor and, like, sobbing my eyes out. And um, I think this was my first actual encounter with God. Um Because I was sitting there, and it was like, um, I don't know, it was like I was sitting in the back seat of my brain, and something else was taking control, so kind of like the meditation thing, Um, except I was more or less just focused on, like, how I was going to do it, and, like, thinking about, like, nothing else but that, and um, all of a sudden, in the middle of it, I just heard, like, this quiet, like, really meek voice being like, hey, like, I know it's hard, but just, like, keep pushing, and, um, I, I don't know, (laughs) and then, um, I think God told me to listen to this one song about, it was, like, a song by Harry Styles, but it was, like, the song repeated the phrase, we'll be all right, over and over and over again, and so that's sort of what saved me in a way, because um, even though it wasn't like a worship song or anything, it was still a song that encouraged me to stay alive and, you know, be there and continue to just push on. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. That's cool. wow. it's God did, you, even, did, yeah. did you hear voices saying to kill yourself or did you just yeah. get a feeling to kill yourself? It was both. Um, it was... It was honestly a really weird, like, it was like an episode. That was the only way to describe it. It was just, like, I would immediately just, like, shut down and then, like, obviously, re- like, come back. But it wasn't me. Like, it was, like, something else was controlling me and sort of compelling me to do it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Did you, you never did drugs, right? Did you do any drugs? No. Thank God I didn't get into wow. that. Yeah. No. That's crazy because, yeah, that. That brought a lot of demonic to me was drugs. My, I was raised kind of, I never got in the new age so much, but I was raised new age, you know what I mean? And I was kind of like, because I didn't like my aunt, but but I was raised that, you know, uh, many ways to God, uh, you know, reincarnation, everything. So I was raised, but we didn't, she wasn't really into it, but I kind of gave me the lie that I could kill myself and it wouldn't be a big deal. I come back. So I didn't have fear of hell. There was no, that was for stupid people. And so, but I was doing a lot of hallucinogenics and mushrooms. 
I got, I hear voices saying, kill yourself and don't be afraid, just do it. And, you know, and so it's like, yeah. So, it's, but it's amazing how hearing this, how Satan will try to get you any way he can. He'll yeah, get you with your sexuality. He'll get you with new age. He'll get you with zodiacs. He'll get you with uh, yeah. depressions or your body. He doesn't care. Like you said, he just wants to steal, kill and destroy. And, uh, but it's amazing how all this stuff just stacks on top of each other, you know, yeah. and just, and where you go. Like you said, I, what did you call it? I'm just a, a blob on the planet, or I don't know how you said it. It's just something on the rock. I mean, it's like, and you think that's, yeah, that's, and so many people, you know, that's why it's so important. Like I was asking you, did any Christian speak to you that there's a million people like that hurting? And they're not going to tell you, hey, I'm hurting, you know, love me, tell me the truth. But that's why I've just been saying a lot lately, you know, the Ephesians 4.12, the equipping the saints for the work of ministry that everyone's supposed to be a minister. Everyone's supposed to go out and say, here I am, God, use me, send me. And as you know, you have many friends, and probably a lot of them don't want to hear it, but but still it plants that seed, right, that that they see the change, because they can't deny the change in your life. That's the thing. All my friends go, ah, F you, Rotors, hate you. But, they, but I'd say, dude, I'm the one who got you into drugs. I now quit with no rehab, just God did it. So... You can say whatever you want. And they go, well, we'll see you in six months. And now this December will be 40 years. So it's been a long six months. But uh, God's awesome. good, right? I mean, God's powerful. And, you know, I tried all that stuff and it was empty. And thank God, like you, that I heard that voice, you know, kill yourself. But then I heard God it's say, Craig, where are you going? You know, and all of a sudden it was like, the way I describe it, kind of, this, I don't know if you really, but it was like, it felt like all these cockroaches, all these flies, kind of like in the passion were just screaming at me. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the voice of God, the still small voice, made them all just disappear and then i heard craig where are you going mm -hmm. and i went oh my goodness i could go from hell on earth to hell my life is terrible and i'm gonna go i'm thinking i'm gonna escape i've got to go to worse place and i was like wow and so i yeah. dropped yeah. the gun but anyway god is good how he rescues and the crazy thing too is like how young you were i mean you were you still are i keep <laughs> thinking like well there's more to your testimony how old what you happens again? when you turn 18 she's only 15 15 oh 15 my goodness 15 years wow. old and you so praise god like most people don't start even this stuff until they're fifth, but that's not actually true. We think that parents yeah, think yeah, that, yeah. but it is yeah. happening. These kids are dealing with this stuff. Um, so how was that? Did you ever talk to them? Would you just talk to your friends? Would you talk to your sister? But she wasn't even saved really, and she was into new age. So yeah, how was your sister, Marcia? We don't want to. Yeah, because you guys Marcia are like but ten, how many years apart? Quite a few. Eleven. Eleven years. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So she is. So it's like she's your big aunt like she's not really your sister <laughs> yeah. right in some way i mean right she's i mean you know what i mean she wasn't really there in your formative years right i mean yeah you're kind of a yeah child. yeah now oh. did your parents yeah. now could you i mean i don't want to throw your parents under the bus but do could you talk to your i mean you're saying they're they're religious but could you ever pour out or did you feel like whoa that would freak like if you told them i'm gay or i'm struggling with new age they'd be like whoa don't talk i mean you couldn't really pour out your heart to them? No, not really. My dad doesn't really do well with emotions because of, you know. Um, but I don't know. My parents, my mom is like, it's weird because she like low-key believes in zodiac signs. Mm -hmm. So it was like that sort of thing where it's like there is, I didn't know about that sort of separation of the new age from Christianity because I still identified as a Christian. You know, I still wore like this picture of Mary and Jesus on me and was like, yeah, I'm Christian. And then went to hate Christians and Christianity. So I didn't really have like that line of like, okay, well, this is Christian. This isn't Christian. Like this is Jesus. This is Satan. Um, and my sister would kind of, she would like talk about like higher powers and all that stuff. And it just sounded cool to me because I was like, ooh, higher power. Those are strong words. And so that was like the weird like attraction part of it. And um, actually, when you asked about drugs and alcohol, that stuff, I was literally so close. Like God saved me before I got into that because um, I actually secretly took a shot of vodka on New Year's mm -hmm. to be cool and hip. And so um, I was very close in getting into that. And um, yeah, it takes it to a whole it, new level. I mean, yeah. drugs and alcohol. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like a, there's like weird levels that you go through, like of reaching. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so and and then the other thing is like a lot of kids, the reason why they don't talk to their parents is because they are embarrassed. Like they they do know deep down, even though around their friends it's cool. 
they know because right we all have a conscience inside of us which conscience means con with science like we all know what's right and what's wrong god put that in our hearts even if we aren't christian when you're not christian and aren't saved like you do know but i there's this rebellion in the younger you're gen z i'm at the literally starting point of gen z but you're gen z i think it would so you started gen z i started gen z that was all me (laughs) but um (laughs) yes thank you um but gen z they are very i mean we're all rebellious people but very like blatantly like they want to do the opposite like you say this well i'm gonna do the complete opposite like very they have this thing like we're going to like they're very radical too like a scary radical they were actually there was this poll or something i don't know where it was from but they're talking about gen z which is you and me saying that if there was ever a civil war over anything again it would be with this generation because they are which is a good thing with the conservatives and stuff they're either like really strong like hey we're not doing this or then the other very flamboyant and very like crazy yeah. wild there's no like it's not the hippie the days anymore wild. it's not hippie it's like we're gonna fight and we're gonna win and yeah. so for you with your friends right because there's power in numbers when ki- kids are with their friends they go wild um but what would you say because now you know bad company corrupts Gamoral being saved Check. but what would you say to kids who were feeling like you maybe insecure feeling like you had to fit in what would you say to them if you were to go back only a year ago when you were 14 years old, Alex, what would you, what would you say to them of like, they don't need to be a part of that crowd or what would you say to them? Old Alex. There's like, so there's this sort of like idea of how all of Gen Z is and like how we're all adults. So I look like adults. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That's true. But I would, I would tell myself that I'm a kid and that I need to sort of act like a kid because there is no reason for me to be so loud about politics and yeah. there is no reason for me to care so much about, like, what others think of me because, you know, it's – it is my life, but it also is just – it's God's – life as well in the sense of like how he's using me for as his vessel but it's like I would just tell myself to calm down like there's no reason for you to be so mean to people and to just I don't know and um kind of at a loss well they don't like kids because I I love how you said that it's true I think kids are growing up way too fast in things and the things they watch the things they listen to Right. The things that like pornography and stuff that at the young at age of like five years old, young boys are like watching and being addicted to pornography. Um, did you ever get into that or was there anything you ever struggled with? Yeah. Praise God. Not- because that is like a huge thing that kids are just um, obsessed with. Um, Harry Potter and witchcraft, like all this yeah. stuff they're teaching these kids. Like you said, Halloween, we can talk about that a little bit more, but like kids before you would run around and like play in the dirt and go swimming and like that was fun but now because social media like you said kids are literally killing themselves because they lost a certain amount of followers or because Mm -hmm. like you said their boyfriend or girlfriend leaves them first of all i'm like you shouldn't have a boyfriend and girlfriend you're a child (laughs) like you're not ready to get married but these kids that's what i mean by they're acting like they're adults where they're trying to like be these things i'm like just be a kid like you need to like have fun singing little kids songs like at the church songs but these kids are so indoctrinated and exposed to tiktok and seeing all these inappropriate things and watching these tv shows that they shouldn't like um Mm -hmm. i forgot the really popular tv show that it's like it's the it's lgbtq um I don't remember it, but there's a ton of shows on Netflix and things that these kids should not be watching, just straight up watching sex and sex. It's just, that's what I agree with you. Like these kids need to stay innocent and pure. Like obviously there's going to be temptations. I still don't think parents should see this as a thing they're letting the enemy in, but then they're like, la la la. Like they're just kids. They're not doing this stuff. 
where it's like, okay, but you need to realize you're opening the door for your kids to do that. So you do need to talk to them. Like they are getting exposed to things that they should not be at a young age. And that's why parents need to protect their children from this stuff. I know people think like, oh, you guys are sheltering your kids. I'm like, I think sheltering is great. In the, in the, yeah, they say that. I was not oh, to about it. the problem. Yeah. Like I was never told why. Yeah. Like why being like gay was bad. Why like just drinking is bad. Like it was. I was just so confused. Yeah, yeah no guidance really. Mm. And yeah, we have Hollywood. It's like it's wild. They. I remember taking a psychology class. And they were saying how before there was James Dean. He was in the fifties or six late fifties. But he had the movie called Rebel Without a Cause, and mm. that started the whole kind of greaser kid movement. Before then, kids were just living on farms and yeah. really didn't have anybody. They just mm-hmm. kind of didn't have anything, and then that kind of gave that rebel thing, and then they kind of yeah. gave the greaser, and then it came the hippies, and then it's just now you got it, and it's just happening a lot sooner yeah. because Satan, as we said, just wants to uh, grab. I want to talk about this. Uh, this verse, Second Timothy two twenty four, says this: mm. A servant of the Lord, the Lord's bond servant, must be not quarrel. But be gentle to all, able to teach, patient, uh, verse 25, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If perhaps God will grant them repentance so they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses. Hear this good yeah. escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. And that's the thing we realize is that it's amazing. And you were saying that Stephen said this, Bankars, how he wouldn't read the Bible because he knew it was true. And isn't it amazing how you didn't say that, but maybe you can add to it, but how you just, even though you were kind of a Christian, you kind of hated Christians. Yeah. And that should show there really is just two kingdoms. So really, we Satan might have a lot of different names for yeah. his kingdom, yeah. right? New Age, a Zodiac, whatever. But really, it's there's only two kingdoms. There's either the kingdom... Uh, and we think, oh, but there, like, people like to do three kingdoms. Kingdom of the devil, right? All the other religions, kingdom of self, and then the kingdom of God. But the kingdom of self is, is Satan, Satan because why? I will become like God. I, me, I. And so anything but God is the kingdom of Satan. But it's a wild how even though you had said, I never, I'm a kind of a Christian. If someone said, well, aren't you a Christian? Doesn't your family Christian? You'd probably go, oh, yeah. But then why do you hate people that represent as a Christian? Because why? Deep inside your sin condemned you. You you had a guilty conscience. You knew, mm-hmm. oh my goodness. Isn't that amazing too? I always laugh when you see people who are in the lifestyle or are saying, I'm an I'm a atheist, how they hate this God that they say doesn't exist, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. it's like, and even the rainbow flag, you might be honest, but the rainbow flag is based on the Noah thing, I'll never flood the earth again, which is saying, oh, now God's saying he, he's not into he's not sin anymore. Us. It's not judgment. I'm like, wait, he's going to judge the earth with fire. It's yeah. it's worse. I'd rather be water than fire. But I'm <laughs> going, but they've taken even, it's wild, they take a Bible theme and manipulate it and take it out of context to say, hey, I'm free now to just, you know, come out and do whatever, mm-hmm. but that ain't the, what it's saying. It's saying that, hey, he's never going to judge the earth again with water, but he is going to judge the earth, and he's going to judge, and everyone's going to stand before him. But I thought it's amazing how the gay pride flag is based off of the Bible. Yeah. That should show you everything. Like, everything tends towards God, and everything is hated about God because people know that inside. It's like his laws are written in their heart. You knew Everyone knows that, hey, you know what I mean, that I'm, i got to stand before this God who I'm going to give an account. And so even though you fight it, you know deep down. Did you know that? I mean, did you? can you look back and say, I really was kind of fight. Like I knew God was, I kind of subconsciously knew he was real and kind of fight, like fought, like I'm angry with you because mm-hmm. I'm not happy with my life and you don't give me boys or you don't mm-hmm. give me whatever, the perfect body. I mean, was there kind of that? If you look back, you can see where how Satan set you up to hate God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought I was atheist for some reason, but I knew that God existed. I just didn't want to admit it to myself. Like, it was it was weird. It was like, just like a brick wall and like someone was whispering. So like, I could kind of hear it, but like, it was just, you know, I had scales over my eyes, you know, like Paul was blinded and then he was, he was granted sight by God. Um, so that's sort of how it was like, and it was just, I don't know, it was weird to me because I knew I wasn't being logical, 
and I, but I just didn't want to admit it because then I would be stupid. Then I would just be a cringy Christian. Yeah. So it was. I know. That's why I thought I said, Christians all Christians are, cool. are nerds. And now I'm a nerd. <laughs> now I'm the very person I hated right now. Thank you so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you like to listen to us, wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations. Thanks so much to our sponsor, Mission Heating and Cooling. Please make sure to check out their website in the description below. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you next week for part two with Alex. Thank you.